what it allowed you know you us to see is that even in you know a relatively unusual uh, environment, the same sort of macroeconomic dynamics that that exist in the in the global macro economy existed in this relatively you know defined and constrained environment. So you know even you know basic things, basic things like the idea of um, of people exchanging uh, money today for money tomorrow. So it's called bread today versus bread Wednesday, right? And what is the time value of being able to eat your bread today versus giving your bread to someone and getting more bread in in five days, right? And that's a fundamental concept of all of uh, uh, of all of the capitalist system, right? Because it's people giving up their money for an expectation of earning more money in the future. It also has great lessons on monetary policy, which is that, um, you know, the, the way monetary policy worked there, uh, cigarettes were the primary form of currency for a variety of different reasons. And so what you saw was when there was an influx of cigarettes, you saw prices rise as a function of that in cigarette terms. And then uh, one of the interesting things about cigarettes is that they uh, had a, a, use, a use, not just uh, for money purposes, so they were then smoked. And then you had a deflationary environment in the economy, which then lowered prices over time until the next instance in which cigarettes were delivered by the Red Cross. And so that's a perfect example of a monetary cycle that existed in the context of this overall environment. And so, you know, when I think about the economy just more generally, it kind of goes to your your original, your, your first question. I think in many ways, there are these sort of really core drivers of of what drives people's economic behavior, you know, some rational, some irrational. And if you understand the way in which people uh, behave, if you understand those sort of core economic drivers and behaviors, then you can really start to see, you know, the macro economy is just really a summation of everyone behaving in those ways. Everyone thinking about what is bread worth to me today versus tomorrow? They might be thinking about televisions today versus tomorrow, but you know the same basic concept holds. And so these sort of laboratories of behavior really help clarify and understand what are those sort of core fundamental relationships, drivers of the macroeconomy and markets that we can apply. You know, as we're as we're living uh, our day to day and trying to understand what's happening. 